Hey team, welcome back to Ambrokes Ranch. Um, got a little problem with the Case 850B dozer here. The transmission, after it heats up, it starts to lose power. And it, only in the um, high range on, on the lever controls, right? So this has four speeds. It's got a high and low um, overall range if you will and then it's got inside of that range it's got another high and low so irregardless of of which um you know major high and low uh it's in the lever controls on the high it seems to have some power problems so i don't see any leaks or anything the torque converter over starts to overheat right so the temperature gets real hot if i put it in low then it uh uh, that, that, that temperature starts to drop and I can still use the machine. So I'm not really sure what it is. I'm going to uh, approach the easy answer first and I'm going to change the hydraulic filter. So let's give that a shot and we'll see where we get from there. All right, here I've got the uh, plates off uh, in the operator control station. What you're looking at there is the suction filter. Um, on the B unit, I believe this is a paper element. Uh, on the uh, regular 850 unit, this is a cleanable uh, screen. Um, I'm coming back up out of the compartment below the operator cab. Uh, and then this round uh, device here with the four cap screw or four, four bolts on it, um, that is the pressure side filter. Um, and there's a paper element in there. I think the 850 is the same. Uh, so you can kind of see it there. Uh, and it's inside of that. So I'm going to take out the suction filter first you can see it down there at the bottom and uh, it takes a what appears to be an inch and a half um, wrench to get onto the back side right there there's a, a uh, basically a nut that allows you to unscrew the filter housing uh, mine is kind of boogered up somebody's been on there with channel locks so I think it's an inch and a half uh, it may be a uh, inch and seven sixteenths but I can't get that on. Um, the eight inch and a half's a little loose. So anyway, I'll uh, clean that up if I, if and when I get it off. All right, so after having bookered around with trying to get this thing off multiple ways, as you can see, this is uh, pretty well worn off. Um, lots of people have taken this off. Um, I ended up, you know, I tried a strap wrench. I tried driving a socket on there the end. Uh, it's very difficult to work down inside of that compartment. Uh, I ended up with a pipe wrench on here, which I'm sure is what everybody else did, uh, only to find out that it's fairly clean. It's not in too bad a shape and that this one is not a paper element. It's a wire mesh. And so it's cleanable, reusable. Uh, unfortunately, I got the box dirty from my other one, so I probably won't be able to return it. It was a $30 filter and it was the wrong part. So I'll clean this up with some detergent and then uh, blow it off, let it dry for a bit and reassemble it. I'll probably clean up these a little bit uh, with a file. I don't know that it'll do any good and I'll probably end up putting it back on with a pipe wrench as well. Very difficult to get out of there. There's uh, all kinds of hydraulic and uh, you know cables and all kinds of things, uh, obstructions in the way. Probably you know, not worth taking the belly pan off, but I'm sure that's how they had it originally designed to be removed. Uh, or perhaps not, who knows. Anyway, it was a bitch. So let's get this cleaned up and uh, we'll put it back in. All right, in, uh, in cleaning this filter, I see that there is a part number, M-2334. Uh, so any of you folks that are, maybe have a hole in your screen or just wanna get a new one, um, I haven't cross-referenced that to anything, but it looks like a part number. Uh, but it cleaned up nice. Uh, and I also discovered what I thought was grease. This is a silicone on the seal surface there, right below the O-ring. So I'm guessing uh, the last person didn't replace the O-ring and it was leaking. And they were trying to get some work done and that was their solution. So I'm going to get myself an O-ring before I reassemble this. And I'm beginning to think that uh, dirty filters isn't my problem. Um, I'm thinking that the guy before me went in after the same stuff 
and just decided to sell it. But I hope that's not the case. Let's clean the uh, pressure side filter. Okay, here we're looking at the arrangement of the uh, pressure side filter. Uh, obviously, it's off the tractor. I want you to remove those uh, four 916 bolts there. There's a spring that pushes it down. There's this uh, small strainer basket here. And uh, this seems to have a lot of metal in it and it might even be completely plugged up. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that this was uh, my problem. Uh, and then you have the filter element itself. And so I have a new um, Donaldson filter P163437. I'm hoping that that's the same. It looks pretty compatible. It comes with a nice uh, gasket here. Uh, again, the previous uh, person that worked on this uh, put Teflon, or I'm sorry, uh, silicone gasket sealant up underneath of this cap here. So I'll have to uh, clean that off and hopefully that seal will be enough and we'll see what it looks like. So I'm gonna start with this here. It's, uh, it's filthy. The oil on the pressure side was also very dirty. Uh, so this filter um, uh, is definitely needs to be changed. Whether it's the prime cause of my problem, I don't know. Logically, it makes sense, right? At uh, high pressure, I'm um, sorry, the uh, the high high and high and low high, um, I would lose power. And so trying to move a lot of fluid through the system to accommodate those that uh, that gear range. And so I'm assuming um, that it was just starving for oil thus overheating the torque converter. So we'll see. We're gonna start by uh, cleaning out this, I don't know, diffuser, coarse strainer, I don't know. Oh, so that's solid on top. It's not plugged up. I thought it had some metal shavings on the top and it looked like that's how it worked. Um, so I'm guessing that's the plug. The fluid comes up around the outside and goes back down through the middle and then this caps off this end. But there's really not a gasket there other than this little piece of rubber. You see how nasty that is. Just lots of contaminant there. So let's go ahead and throw this away, get it off the shelf. And I just made a big mess on the floor. Assuming that's coming across on camera. Looking at it through the light, there seems to be like a, a spring in there. Maybe there's a, maybe it's a pressure relief bypass. Probably is. This this device right here is a, is a plunger. And I believe that actually goes upward to relieve pressure in the event that the uh, filter is clogged. And it bypasses the filter. But I'm just guessing. Don't know that for sure. I don't want to push on it. But there's, there's definitely a spring in there inside of there uh, and they, then perhaps this is like a coarse filter in the event of a bypass the spring and the cap silicone that they stuck on there to assist in seal sealing. I'm really surprised there's not a gasket here. I'll have to go look at the parts manual and, and check and see. I'm going to get a wire brush and clean that up and then we'll put it back together. And I've got the uh, new filter here. 
I've cleaned off all of the components. The plunger is indeed a bypass. It actually goes this way. And so this detents in, I don't know if you can see that on camera, and that uh, allows the fluid to run through this way. And then I guess this, this uh, coarse screen picks up any major contaminants. Um, so that goes on top of the filter as such. The spring goes here to hold it in, down. And then this is the new gasket. You know, I said I'm surprised there's not a gasket here, but there was a rub, uh, this rubber seal. Now this one's a little bit larger in diameter than the, the steel ring. Um, so I'm gonna have to go stick this inside of the housing, make sure it fits right before I put it together. Uh, but that's it. Uh, so I'm really hoping that this was uh, my problem. We'll see once I fire it up. Okay, uh, I cleaned out this canister. Um, I dropped the filter and the spring in there. Uh, I don't know if you can see here, but there's lots of uh, metal flakes. Oil was very dirty. So there was a lot of uh, metallic stuff in there from the transmission. The filter definitely needed to be replaced. Lots of dirty, lots of dirty oil. Uh, don't get the filter that I got. The gasket, though the filter looks right, the gasket is too large. As you can see, there's a big gap here at the bottom. And it, uh, it needs to be the right one. It's, uh, it looks awfully high too. This going in here, it just won't fit in that hole no matter what. So I'm gonna have to uh, go get a new gasket. Once I'm done with that, we'll reassemble it. I'll get a gasket, an O-ring um, for the bottom piece, uh, the suction filter as well. Uh, and then we'll put it back together and, and give it a try. Well, I've got everything back together, um, no leaks. I've uh, done a little bit of earthwork here. This is, this is about four hours of work. Um, it didn't uh, resolve my problem though. I still have an issue with the torque converter overheating. It appears my transmission pressure is low so I'm gonna have to do some more research. If you guys uh, have any experience with the Case 850 series, uh, 1150, probably the 450 as well, and uh, torque converter overheating, pressure low, I'd appreciate uh, you leaving me some comments. Something to start with here. Here's a look at the ranch. And I'm trying to put a, uh, a pond in here. We have kind of a intermittent creek with some springs. You can see some water down there. Um, it's been dry here in Texas for probably haven't seen rain in 12 weeks and I thought I'd get some work done, uh, which I was able to, but it's still pretty wet down there. Um, when the dozer's working, it's, it works well, and, uh, but then it quickly overheats. Uh, so I don't know what to do. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Ciao for now.